Well, good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to North Central Minnesota. I'm Minnesota Eric, and today we're going to replace out my my dash with Polaris's 2015 technology, their first GPS. I got this for, well, not quite a song, but I got a good deal on it. And uh, I like to run around in the Paul Bunyan left, right, and center, and I'm constantly getting myself lost. I don't know. Some people have a sense of direction, and I don't. But when it's gray skies, who does? Anyway. I'm getting myself lost all the time and having to get out my iPhone to look to find out where I'm at. And if I had a rudimentary GPS, I wouldn't have to stop all the time. And so I went out looking to try to find a, a rudimentary off-road GPS and I came across what I thought was a pretty good deal on Polaris's entry-level uh, GPS. They came out with this in 2015. It fits, I guess, apparently everything uh, with the right adapter kit. I've got the right adapter kit. Amongst other things, it'll come with a new upper dash panel and it comes with a bunch of wires and in here too is a GPS center which it looks fairly simple to install but of course it involves drilling and uh, you know the thing about holes is holes are like diamonds. Once you drill one, they're there forever so you got to get it right. Anyway, let's get going on this project. The digital dash replaces the gauge cluster, but it requires an entirely new dash. And so just like about every other upgrade I do on this thing, the darn window's got to come off or the windscreen. And I keep waiting for the day when these little plastic clips give up the ghost and stop working, especially now. Right now it's about, oh, I'm guessing maybe about 34 degrees out. It's perma windy here. Oh no, don't rain. It's just warm enough to maybe rain and not snow. It's just a, every Minnesotan will tell you this is just a miserable time of the year. The T40 Torx got to come out. Make sure my impact driver is on its lowest setting. Let's see here. I bet you the parts tray is probably going to come out. Seems to me they want to have the GPS mounted front forward somewhere. Parts, parts pot. Okay. Seems to me this chest. There we go. About the only really good thing about uh, having replaced the wiring harness in this thing. Is I know exactly how this thing comes apart. <laughs> Sad but true. So, okay, so this is the old dash. I'm going to have to recycle the switches, uh, the 12 volt power. And the key off of that and insert that into the new the new part here and then uh, I have to install the digital dash and that's got a mounting bracket that holds it up in the back as well so that's bench work okay YouTube I've run into a, a snafu as uh, those who have been following my channel know, I bought this machine bonked with 195 miles on it. And this piece was down in front of the radiator, wedged in. You know what? Oh, cool. It comes with a Minnesota radiator kit. In other words, we block off half the radiator because it gets so bloody cold up here that uh, we got we to gotta block off the radiator. Well, it turns out it is indeed a radiator shroud, but it's supposed to go across the top. And this hole here is where the GPS mount's supposed to go. Whoops. So. I went online, I looked at the whole part, there's a couple of metal parts that come off of this and apparently they are not held on very well on the ends here, but I tell you what, it's a big hassle to try to put that on. And so I have 
what I've decided to do I can get it in here is puzzle out how I can put I've decided this thing's rigid enough if I just hold it in place and so I'm gonna zip tie it up to the front of the grill by drilling a hole straight through here and straight through it so I'll just have to remember to cut a couple of zip ties if I take out the front grill. <laughs> Actually, maybe I don't even have to do that. I can just drill a hole and have it loop around here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. So, after more than my fair share of fiddling around, I got two zip ties holding this guy firmly in place. And they go, uh, let's see if I can't steal my own light here. They go, you see that zip tie right there? And then there's another one right there. So that's, and I'm going to leave the pigtail ends on here as a cl disassembly clue for me because I'm not going to remember this. Anyway, and it's sleeting out. I think I'm going to hook up the dash and start this thing up and move it. This is what 415 looks like. I just heard that further north, this is the last day of sun for something like, uh, what is it, 40, 60 days? <laughs> Meanwhile, we're like belly aching. It's 415, it's dark. <laughs> And sleeting. So this is a problem in the garage is trying to get proper lighting on the project so the cameras can see. Okay so now that I've solved uh, where to mount the GPS receiving unit like I didn't have it on my machine now I do. Uh, there's a sticker underneath this thing to hold it down. Time to start exploring our wiring. Ooh, we got zip ties. We got zip ties. They sent us with zip ties. Always welcome. Here's the bracket for holding in the uh, GPS unit. So, got that. Let's see here. This is the wiring harness for. Uh, the GPS receiver and again uh, Polaris likes Deutsch connectors too. A uh, little trivia here, Deutsch connectors got popular because you get more pins in smaller spaces. That's how they got popularized over the old uh, weather pack style. And then I've got a, uh, a uh, USB plug-in with holy honkin look at look at this that's a lot of pins for USB Anyway, a lot of pins for a lot of pins for USB, man. So that's what I got. I'm now at the point where we've got to do some swapping around, and uh, we we got our unit here, our thingamabob. This is the digital. I know it's small, but you know something's better than nothing, and that's the way I'm thinking. So. Okay, YouTube, it is the next day. The uh, reason why is I ran into a problem where I didn't have the 6x1x, by by, oh, say, 10, 12 millimeter long bolts to bolt the GPS unit into uh, the bracket. So I had to go to town, and geez, you go to town, you go grocery shopping, and anyway, you go to town. So it's the next day. So now I'm going to start doing the transfer of the parts on to the new dash. Okay, so make sure down is down. And this guy wants to fit in like so. And then we've got, oops, upside down. This guy fits in. That makes much more sense. And that's what I went to town for. And since I went to town, I got kind of a variety of sizes because I realized I was just flush out of six millimeter stuff. So. I bought what I thought I needed and then I bought more. Putting 
all this together loose before I snug it up. It's about 15 degrees, 15, yeah, 15 degrees cooler outside, so I gotta have the heater on and the doors closed. And the red squirrel that lives in my garage just woke up, so it's running around. I was here working one night, I took a break because Mark was over. We're chatting, Mark was working on his dirt bike, and I was watching. The red squirrel jumps out of the rafters, runs down a workbench, and jumps onto my lap. <laughs> Which was surprising to me. And the red squirrel jumped off my lap before I could really react, but basically I was, you know, doing an Indian rain dance, if you can imagine, in the chair. And that's when I realized I have not evicted the red squirrel. In fact, I just heard a <coughs> real rodent. He's up. That's on there. So, the switches Polaris uses are made by a company named Carlisle. The same thing as Marine switches. Uh, it's the same switch. They have a variety of different faces on them. Okay, a little bit of fiddling around here. We're trying to figure out what size this is. And uh, to take the key off, you need a 26 millimeter socket. Push it on. I don't know what size this is, but a 26 pushed on hard will be able to turn this plastic nut without stripping it. So there you go, you get the key out. It's just a 12 volt plug. Oh yeah, it's working its way out. All right. There you go. So then you get your uh, 12 volt power port, and I had gotten USB plugged into it, but that's 12 volt power port. Okay, we don't have to recycle the old gauge. That can stay in here. towards the left on this. Off the bench just to tug it in. Make sure it's kind of in there right. can't be lost. So now we've transferred those and then goes four-wheel drive off. It goes in like he's catching this. So again this is a Carlisle switch. These things are nice. Probably why everybody uses them. Headlights off. So what everything looks like once it's installed in there. Let's get the light on down here. If you can look at it, there's a grommet going through the back of the, I guess it would be not the glove box, but the doubled in. That's where the USB connector goes and the USB connector goes up to this huge honking connector. That gets plugged into the back of the digital uh, dash. Okay, I'm gonna try to show you uh, hooking everything up again. And uh, let's see here, I'm looking for an index. There's a notch there. Oh, that's where the notch is, okay. 
Why don't you? Nothing's clicking for me today. Ah, there we go. I got to click. Oh, dear. I can hear nothing but happy little clicks. <laughs> happy, happy little clicks. Let's see here. You are indexed in the top. Again, hopefully you can see this. I'm probably in the way to some extent. See, I have nothing metal here to... Oh, I guess... Ooh, I got one bolt. Can you see that? The light's in the way. Well, that's not too bad, though. All right. That's the four-wheel drive switch. So, let's... fix that from the other side. Where is the little black guy? There's a little tab. Can you see it? You see that little tab? It goes on the bottom right. I can't see what I'm doing either. switch which its tab is on the bottom ignition switch is about the only thing that's really shoved on there good because it's got a nut that screws in and then we've got these two wires and as I recall left side is hot as we're looking or right side is hot as we're looking at it and that's okay before I button everything up let's do a performance check Ooh, booting up Ooh, I gotta accept I bet you that's the middle button Ooh, look at that all right so let's System settings, system info, oh. right, so it's, let's peel this thing off so you can get it, so there we go, there's a, uh, there's everything I need to know right there to register with Polaris. Okay, so now that I've confirmed that the uh, the system boots up, I can button everything else up. I have to put my tray and the cover back on. The installation instructions kind of glossed a step. And basically what they're, they have you do is they have you plugging a pigtail, an existing pigtail, into the existing diagnostic port, right? Well, then they've got this empty plug. Well, what you're supposed to do is then take the plug from the old diagnostic port, drill another hole in the firewall, and then mount it. And I just wanted to call that out to you right now, YouTube, so you know that that's part of the process. So here we are at the gateway of Paul Bunyan Forest. And much like a fish finder, this is how uh, the Polaris Interactive Digital Display tracks where you've been it leaves a line right behind you just like a fish finder and uh, so you can record those so you can create your own more detailed map as well so that's pretty cool um, this is exactly what I was looking for in this machine and running the dog <laughs> 